Hello and welcome to today's presentation of artists. Each artist's practice has developed from their own unique viewpoints, creating dialogues around introspection and social commentary, which all exist in their own temporal worlds, giving the audience a glimpse into the future from the fixed point in time, which is now. An interest in generational similarities allows Kira Bernard to utilize her skills within the photographic process to showcase her family. Looking into the past and at the technologies used provides Bernard with different narratives to explore, which include film, cameras, and cinefilms. She also defines the technologies that are indicative of the 2000s, a time of development and growth for Bernard. Her work reflects themes of identity and the self. It focuses on fellow female family members for more than just guidance through life. The documentation of this fuels Bernard's portfolio with portraits, candid photographs, and videos that highlight a sense of belonging and gratitude. Multimedia installation artist Anna Dermitsaki's practice is experimental, playful, and sparks dialogue between the physical and metaphysical worlds. Dermitsaki is constantly inspired by the interplay between Cambridge's rural and urban environments, with a key interest in the Cambridge University Botanical Gardens. This layered experience invites you to retreat into a colorful dreamscape, highlighting nature and the overlooked beauty of everyday life. How can a moment in this simulated environment highlight a dialogue between the inside-outside? How can it reconnect us to nature? Projecting glimpses of hope, Dermatsaki tries to see us through one of the toughest global pandemics to date. Katie Drake's practice researches silence around sexism, sexual harassment, and assault occurring in public. She is particularly interested in the reasons why victims and witnesses do not speak up against these misdemeanors when they occur. Her research utilizes a feminist methodology, so employs collaboration and participation, constructs knowledge from experience, and promotes social change. She employs print because of printmaking's association with activism and protest, its own subjugation, and because its characteristics accord with the nature of the research. By raising awareness of these issues, she hopes to open dialogue and explore ways to create more sustainable communities. Audiovisual artist Welding Draper's practice explores appropriation, sampling, and prosumer culture. His starting points are the liminal spaces inherent within samples those spaces between the origin and the destination, which hold the potential to be manipulated, then repurposed. Using tacit knowledge, Draper weaves layers of images and sounds, creating audio-visual tapestries. With snippets of spoken word interviews, samples from his personal music collection and sample library, and at times adding his own spoken poetry, his outcomes construct conversations that create bridges between the past and the present in thought-provoking ways. Draper's tools are sample, cut, position, paste, loop, edit, and play. Deborah Suzanne Lander is a multidisciplinary artist fascinated by the number three, which she uses in her works. Her practice includes appropriated objects, photography, sculpture, ink drawings, assemblage, and time-based works. Lander explores memory and human connections, inspired by the techniques of Renaissance and Baroque art, such as the use of light and shade in painting and drawing. She has an interest in how these can be transferred into the moving image. A scavenger, storyteller, and archivist, Lander uses narratives to traverse the realms of ritual, myth, and religion. She supports the idea of death positivity and uses practice-based methodology to explore what it means to be human. 
Rita Matika is a visual artist who believes in looking past the obvious. Matika makes close observations and engages with subject matter as a process. In the past year, she has created work that has taken a drift towards a more personal, reflective journey in her life. Matika's practice is greatly influenced by her experiences and understanding of the reality of life. She hopes her art communicates subjective experiences and tells a story to people from diverse backgrounds and perspectives. What propels Matika is the attempt to see beyond and capture the uniqueness of narrative. Her focus is to inspire others to reflect with care at the world around them. Liz Mills is a multimedia artist whose current practice focuses on ceramics that explores the notion of the imperfect. Mills is influenced by the Japanese Zen principles of wabi-sabi, an intuitive appreciation of a transient beauty in the physical world that reflects the irreversible flow of life in the spiritual world and the golden repair process of Kintsugi. Liz uses those influences to create small inlaid decorated ceramic forms with gold to draw attention to the natural imperfections within her work, asking us to reflect on the beauty and value that can be found within the imperfect nature of ourselves. Eva Pandera's practice revolves around a visual process using a variety of media to communicate a personal response to her environment. Throughout the experimentation with materials and tools, as well as a contextual exploration, she attempts to excavate the profound meaning of nature within an anthropological existence. The body of work produced is a large-scale drawing combined with a video installation representing the vegetation that existed before humanity, and which will take over after humankind disappears. During the development, the forest becomes denser and darker, the vertical lines drawn in pencil reflecting the light in order to suggest uncanny and uneasy surroundings. Melissa Pentney is an interdisciplinary artist who focuses on how a handmade book can act as a personal narrative for an artist, a vessel of communication of current paintings, designs, and ideas. Her work investigates the present moment. It explores thoughts, feelings, and experiences of life. Using prehistoric and medieval art as a reference, Pentney's interest lies in past artistic practices. She applies them to her work in a contemporary way. Predominantly, she paints contemporary subjects, but combines craft techniques to create different surfaces and structures within the painting. Her focus is to create imaginary painted scenes based around our relationship with the natural world. Ian Phillips McLaren's practice combines video, sculpture, performance, and animation. His current work is an investigation into the inner self through a Jungian lens. Phillips McLaren has crafted four effigies representing Jung's four main archetypes, which, when combined, represent the whole self. Each video sculpture characterizes separate aspects of his identity performing independently, but at the same time, collectively creating a single self-portrait in a three-dimensional environment. These performances range in delivery and dialogue, and are designed to engage the viewer on multiple levels. Phillips McLaren disrupts any emotive response to the piece by revealing the mechanisms of its operation. Sachiko Purser's recent series of work, Endangered Species, seeks to raise awareness of the wave of extinction in the natural world by creating images of vanishing animals and communicating important environmental issues to the viewer. Sp
species are quietly disappearing from the earth. She captures their existence by creating images of ghostly humanized animals. Purser is passionate about nature and the environment, especially the welfare of animals and birds. She combines traditional techniques such as Japanese wood engraving and sumi ink painting with a contemporary perspective of printmaking and digital techniques to create mixed organic technological hybrids. Intrigued by how the trace of the human form can be encapsulated to create a preserved memory in sculptural form, Kaylee Reed uses her own body as part of the methodology. By doing so, Reed is continually recreating versions of herself in various moments in time. These forms allude to a ghostly double of the original. Imprisoning these versions of herself allows the distance required to understand the past, allowing one to move forward towards the future. Reed uses digital media, film, and photography to reimagine her sculptural practice and to explore the importance of form, time, and movement within her work. Jenny Souter's interest in the theories of Antonio Damasio, which are founded on neuroscience and philosophy, provide a platform to investigate art as a bodily-led experience, focusing on feeling as a navigational tool to describe how a person is affected and why. Exploring the narrative of experience through perception, Souter's practice describes a narrative that has been personally interpreted. This film and sound installation is inspired by a patient's experience of a hallucination. Sound, as a particular medium, fascinates Souter for its physical properties that are absorbed somatically into body-based systems. Florence Stearman's practice combines the use of sculpture, painting, drawing, and writing. A multimedia artist, she is interested in life, nature, and time, themes that are explored within her work, using natural materials. Stearman's most recent work is inspired by the natural death and rebirth of her local woodland and the loss of her father. She is fascinated by the way nature grieves itself through growth, and she connects that grief with her own. She carves her own poetry on branches and makes structures from these. The sculptures have been created alongside a handwritten artist's book that shows us the way that nature is telling her to grieve. Shane Aidan Wimbledon is an illustrator and fine artist whose practice uses a range of materials, from polymorph and wire for sculptures, to illustrations onto canvas and books. He investigates mental functions, human connections, recovery and support in relation to mental health and the human experience. He is inspired by the interactions between individuals and the various elements that create vulnerability in the human condition. Wimbledon's recent work explores the importance, depth and fragility of amalgamated connections between others. He also investigates identity and its impact on perception mental health and function. This hard-working and environmentally conscious team of artists and printmakers have worked diligently during the COVID crisis. Whether it is returning their sculptural works back into nature to highlight the impact that greenwashing can have on the environment, and how we can overlook beauty in the everyday and in nature itself to addressing the controversy of subjects such as sexual harassment, immigration, death, or mental health. These artists examine themselves and the communities in which they live. 